Why mainstream forms of money are evil? First, let's look at some definitions. Evil. Morally reprehensible, wicked, an evil impulse, arising from actual or imputed bad character or conduct, causing discomfort or repulsion, disagreeable, causing harm. Money. Something generally accepted as a medium of exchange, a measure of value or a means of payment such as officially coined or stamped metal currency, money of account, paper money. These definitions only take us so far into understanding the nature of the evil in money. We need to dig beneath the surface of both of these ideas to identify the evil that I want you to recognise with me. Evil seems simple enough, but it is to some extent subjective. What is evil to me might not be evil to you. What is less subjective, though, is our emotional responses that relate to survival and what we might call the pleasure-pain principle. While it might be true that some people are emotionally dysfunctional to the point of not feeling much at all, we all generally will feel the pain of being stabbed by a knife, or more poignantly, the pain of being starving, homeless and likely ill as a result too. We will generally all also feel the pleasure of having our needs met and of feeling secure in life in general. Evil is defined by dictionaries as causing discomfort, repulsion and harm, and in our current society we are likely to experience these when lacking money for any significant length of time. A lack of money tends to mean that we are unable to buy food, clothing or find a place to sleep, and so we suffer and may even die as a result. Some of us, though, might disagree that this is evil, because there is no intention to cause someone to end up this way, and some may even claim that any evil involved is the doing of the person who is actually poor and suffering that they have somehow brought about this suffering on themselves through poor choices, and thus the evil is perhaps their own. What if it could be shown that there is intention to cause such harm to people through the use of money? Would that then make the money itself evil? I will show you here that there is an intent to cause harm that has been built into our money systems, and that as a result the causation of extreme suffering to people is intentionally unavoidable. I will also show that mathematically there is no possible other outcome than bankruptcy for a significant percentage of the population, as long as the money systems in use today continue to be used. The complexity of the financial systems has made understanding this information unnecessarily challenging for most of us for a long time. However, thanks to the internet and many researchers, I will be able to summarise the logic of the situation relatively quickly. 1. Wealth Gap The majority of the wealth of the planet, money, resources and property titles, is held by a small minority of the population, with most people having close to zero or even less than zero due to debt. The top 20% wealthiest households own over 93% of the stock. This means that most people who are born, statistically, will have close to zero support other than what they might claim from governments or as a result of their parents working for a business run by one of the wealthier families. 2. Government corruption. The situation is made worse by the reality that vast amounts of tax money is spent not on helping the human population, but on bailing out banks, paying for military wars, and is lost in corrupt projects that aren't properly overseen. For example, here's a story from just a few days ago of how the US government has quietly given unstable banks $400 billion without most people even noticing. The amount given to human services fluctuates But the general trend that sees much of the government's tax money being siphoned back off to the wealthiest, who control the governments via their proxy politicians, is a virtually perpetual trend. These first two points set the scene for why so many are impoverished from the get-go, and why no matter how much tax you seem to pay, the problems never get any better. Those who do not do enough research tend to assume that the problem is a fundamental lack of intelligence among the least wealthy. These commenters often fail to do the needed due diligence research to know what is really going on in the mathematics and policies in the world around them. When throwing judgment on others, we must always look first at our own involvement in causing what we are pointing at in others. 3. Monetary Fraud Perhaps the most important point here to understand is that the entire foundation of the money creation process is fraudulent. Money is a token that is intended to represent the value of things in our world to make trade easier. In a perfect world, we would only receive the tokens that roughly represent the sum of the value of our past actions to the human community, and therefore our value in the community should be to some extent reflected by the amount of money we receive, spend and hold. This is part of why people often get so obsessed with money, 
since they falsely associate money with a sense of self-worth. We generally understand that if someone can get money for nothing, then the entire system of valuation breaks down and everyone else's money becomes devalued, making their life more difficult. Everyone has to work harder for less as long as someone is making money out of thin air. When people are caught counterfeiting money, they're sent to jail because we know that money out of thin air is a huge problem. However, the most wealthy via the banking system and the controlled governments have been doing exactly this for decades in a way that most people don't understand and that has even been made legal. This is partly why the cost of living seems to continually get higher while the availability of money to the majority of people gets continually more limited. Fractional reserve banking is a key part of the problem here. Many good documentaries have now exposed how the central banks have long been allowed to simply imagine money out of nothing loan it out at interest, and then expect the money plus the interest to be paid back. Professor Richard Werner published a scientific study and empirical evidence gathered through monitoring a bank's systems in real time. He confirmed that this money-out-of-nothing approach to banking is indeed how things are being operated. Banks can legally loan out a factor of around 30 times the amount of money they actually hold. Imagine if you could loan people 30 times the actual amount of money you have in your savings, plus charge them interest you'll be very rich in no time, as long as no one found out what you're up to. This is exactly what banks have been doing via fractional reserve banking. Not only does this mean that those involved become stinking rich at the expense of everyone else, which could be said to be a form of mathematically managed slavery, but it gets worse. Since a huge amount of the alleged money in circulation is actually credit and loans based, upon which interest is being charged, there actually isn't enough real money in circulation to pay back the interest. This can mean only one thing. Many people who take out loans and credit will be unable to repay them. It doesn't matter how hard people work or really what they do, there will be a high percentage of people who go bankrupt. Understanding this mathematical reality is key to understanding how to improve society for almost everyone and is also part of why the claim that poor people are just lazy is itself based only in ignorance. Conclusion if you lack money in our society, you will suffer and possibly die as a result. The financial systems are deliberately configured to ensure that a certain percentage of people will lack money and that another group of people will end up with most of the money, regardless of whether any of these people actually provide valuable services to the community. This is not something that could have been created out of pure ignorance or by accident, especially considering the number of economic experts tasked with monitoring the situation and setting policy. Somewhere along the way, money stopped being a convenient token for exchange and became a weapon of enslavement and tyranny. The harm caused by this can only be defined as evil, using the dictionary definitions already provided. It is not possible to use the fiat currencies such as US dollars, British pounds and euros without participating in a system that manifests evil on a grand scale. Even if you stop using these currencies and shift to alternatives such as cryptocurrencies, you will still be participating in the same evil, since the new tokens can be bought using the old tokens and therefore are still subject to the same problems. The evil is both systemic and very well ingrained into society's structure. Logically, the only solution is to somehow try to reset the economic system and ownership of all resources, or to somehow evolve beyond the use of money altogether. In my experience, evolution means adapting to live from the heart in a way that brings real and felt balance. It is no surprise that it is the financially poorest among us who are often known and felt to have the biggest hearts. They know that what it is to suffer and they seek to prevent it wherever they can. Those with the most wealth also stand to gain greatly through a process of genuine heart-centred balancing in society, since they will no longer need to live in fear in their gated communities, wondering when the rest of the world will come to find them seeking justice. Compassion has the answers here, and those who have been born into a world that has been turned against them, while simultaneously trying to bury them in guilt for being too lazy no matter how hard they try, and too stupid no matter how inventive they try to be, are the ones with the most to gain, the least to lose, and often with the most compassion. If you've enjoyed listening to this, please do give me a like and an upvote wherever you see this. It's important to help this message spread around online. Definitely do leave a comment underneath. I'm sure many people have got important things to say on this subject. I've participated in many, many, many debates on this subject in many groups. And I've probably heard pretty much all the arguments for and against each case by now, but by all means do present your thoughts on this, having heard what I've said here. And if this has changed your perspective on anything, then let me know. And also, if you think I've missed anything important out, then definitely do let me know. As always, thanks for listening. And until next time, peace.